Hey everybody, it's Alex. Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but I think that now would be an appropriate time to upload this video, seeing as this is about Jake Arrieta, the former Chicago Cubs pitcher, and former ace, really, let's face it. He is off to the Philadelphia Phillies. It took him a while to sign somewhere, but he finally did. He is now officially a member of Philadelphia, and he will be making some good money. Um, not as many years as a lot of people kind of expected or what he expected, but he's getting his $25 million plus a year uh, for the first two years at least. So he's no longer a Cub. He is now a former Cub, and I mean, unless they re-signed him late in his career, the last time that we ever saw Jake Arrieta pitch in a Cubs uniform was in the NLCS last year in Game 4, the only game in that series which they won. But this video is here to pay tribute uh, to a guy who was, in my opinion, the most fun Cubs pitcher I ever watched. And I truly mean that. I'm only 23, so... You know, I haven't seen a whole ton of Cubs history like my dad and grandfather, so I didn't really see young Maddox. I saw Maddox when he came back to the Cubs, but he was already kind of declining at that point. I saw Kerry Wood, I saw Mark Pryor, saw Carlos Zambrano. Um, as much as I liked a lot of those guys, to me nothing compared to Jake Arrieta in his prime with the Cubs. That was something of a whole different universe, basically. It was so historical, particularly that 2015 Cy Young season, that you just knew that no matter how good he is, he's never going to do that again. I mean, the second half of his 2015 with a 0 0.77 ERA, th that's, that's unheard of. That's like if a pitching machine that threw 120 miles an hour was pitching. I mean, that's just, it's unreal. But it was an era that started so, I guess unexpectedly is the word, but when you look at when it started to where it ended, all that time in between, I couldn't remember looking forward to a Cubs game more than a Jake Arrieta start, especially in that 2015 season. I mean, just to sum it up in that time, he won the Cy Young in 2015. He threw two no-hitters in 2015 and 2016. Uh, he threw two really good World Series games in 2016, ended up a world champion. Pitched a complete game shutout in the NL wildcard game in 2015. I know pitcher wins don't mean much these days, but winning 20 games in 2015, you know, a, a little cool thing to have. Um, I mean, just... Just look at the stats. As a Cub, he came over 2013 in the Scott Feldman deal. And we're thinking, Arietta, okay, this guy, whoever he is, cool, I guess. His numbers are awful. In his Baltimore years, he had a 546 ERA and a 471 FIP and a 1.5, if you round it up, whip. Ugh. Terrible. But... They saw the potential. Basio worked with him. He worked in the minors. He came up. And he made some pretty good starts in 2013. I'm like, okay, maybe this guy can be something. And then 2014 happened. And I think that a lot of people forget how good he was in 2014. When you think of Jake Arrieta's best, rightfully so, you think of 2015. But in 2014, 253 ERA, 2.26 FIP. In 156.2 innings, he started the season a little late, made 25 starts, but I think he really kind of started catching attention with people that season when he almost threw the no-hitter in Boston. It was broken up with uh, either one out or two outs in the eighth, and then he brought no-hitters late in the game several times that year, and we're all thinking, man, this guy really is good, and then he continued it into 2015, total 177 ERA, 235 FIP. 229 innings pitched, a 0 0.865 whip, 236 strikeouts. Insane. Really, really insane numbers. When he threw his first no-hitter against the Dodgers, 
I was in my old college apartment. We didn't have cable, but I was listening to it on the radio. The same with the 2016 one. It was 2016, 2015 was my senior year of college when I lived in an apartment. Like I said, we didn't have cable. I listened to both those games, the end of the games, on uh, the radio. And just being really, really, really happy that we had an asset like that. That we just kind of got. And Scott Feldman, everyone was all about Feldmania in the first half of 2013. And it was like, wow, we're getting rid of him now. I know we're doing this, but this sucks. And then you know, it, it ended up turning into Jake Arrieta and Pedro Strope, no less. But you just look at what he did. And in his prime, it was like, as many people have said, Bob Gibson like numbers. And we know that Arietta was not a Kerry Wood in the sense of longevity. Because Kerry Wood was a Cub for, in the end of the day, over 10 years. Because he was there from 98 to 08. Then he came back in 11 and the beginning of 12. Um, but what Jake Arietta did, as much as I love Kerry Wood, I mean, it was way above Kerry Wood. He didn't have a 20 strikeout game, but he threw several no hitters. And, you know, Wood piled up the strikeouts. He had some really good years, but never did he have a 235 ERA, then a 177 ERA um, in back to back seasons. And obviously, um, he never won a World Series like Arietta did. Uh, but five years of Jake Arietta, really four and a half technically, but, you know. Five total years is um, when he was in a Cub uniform. So four full, then a little bit in the 2013. Again, not very long, but you got the most out of that long span. Just to put it in perspective, in his absolute peak, and his absolute peak, if we're going to be precise, was 2014 through mid-2016 because... Before the playoffs in 2016, we started to see some struggles. Some of the mechanics were kind of not off, but there was a, a slight slight problem that caused the command to kind of fall a little bit. But he was still pretty good. But we're just going to compile straight 14 through 16. Just all through that. 89 starts, 242 ERA. 272 FIP, 0 0.97 WHIP, 583 innings, and if you care, 50 wins. And then we talked about the postseason success. You look at his overall postseason numbers, 308 ERA in 52.2 innings in the postseason, 238 ERA in 11.1 .1 innings in the World Series, like I said, he had that complete game shutout in the wild card game in 2015. In the NLDS against Washington, pitched four scoreless innings. In the NLCS last year, 1.35 ERA in 6.2 innings pitched. That was his one and final start uh, as a Cub. Uh, the only time he really struggled was... 2015, he kind of ran out of gas by the NLCS. His start against the uh, New York Mets wasn't good. Gave up four runs. He also gave up four runs in Game 3 of the NLDS, but the Cubs did win that game, luckily, so that didn't really stick out as much. But overall, really good numbers in the postseason. Really, really, really good numbers. So we say goodbye to Jake Arrieta knowing that he is going to be part of Cubs' immortality. I mean, is he going to have his number retired like Fergie Jenkins? I doubt it. No. Uh, Fergie Jenkins was there much longer. He's a Hall of Fame pitcher. Uh, Jake was a late bloomer, while you know Fergie Jenkins, Greg Maddox, those guys were you know, Hall of Famers from pretty much the beginning. Uh, Jake didn't really get into his own until he was 27, because now he's 32. And unfortunately, we've seen some decline in him the past year. The velocity has gone down. 
Uh, last year he had a 416 FIP. He gave up 23 home runs in 168 innings. Compared to 10 home runs he gave up in 229 innings in 2015, and that was mostly in the first half, too. He did end with a 3.53 ERA because, though his inconsistencies were pretty bad in the first half last year, he got better in the second half, and he pitched a little differently. Uh, he pitched to more, I guess, contact, if you will, um, but th- there was definitely a-, a change. From 14 to 16, when I mentioned his whip, 0.973, Last year, his whip was 1.2. And a 1.2 whip isn't terrible, but you consider where it was for the previous three years, that that does make a pretty significant difference. And again, you had more walks against him, you had more hits against him, more home runs, more balls put in play. He still had some good stuff. It was just, again, the decline in velocity and the location makes a big difference, but... In Philadelphia, if he could find that again, then he could be good. Do I think it's fair to say that Arietta peaked from 14 to 16? I say yeah. I mean, those are your those are typically your prime years as a player in your late 20s, early 30s. I'm not saying Arietta won't be good in Philadelphia, but I don't think he'll ever come close to the Bob Gibson-esque pitching like he was with the Cubs. I just, I don't. I mean, you never know, but I just don't see it. So, with Arietta leaving, we filled up the rotation. We have you, Darvish. We've moved on. He's moved on. But we'll always be indebted to him for what he did on the field. And I think Philadelphia is going to enjoy having a guy like Jake Arietta on their staff. And I'm going to miss him from now on. I understand, though, why we moved on. In terms of what we're going to get in the future, I think that Yu Darvish is a good move. Also adding Tyler Chatwood, who's younger still. And then having Lester, Quintana, and Hendricks on top of that. Cubs got a pretty darn good rotation. But I will miss Arietta from time to time. Remembering what he did with the Cubs and just how much I liked watching him. He was my absolute favorite Cub in 2015 and even 2016. So... Before we wrap it up, we'll go through all the best Jake Arrieta moments. Not all of them were pitching, too. Some of them were with the bat. But the two no-hitters, like I mentioned earlier, those were big. One against Cincinnati, one against LA. And then you had him finally making the All-Star game in 16 after he was snubbed in 15. You could pretty much say the entire second half of 2015 was like a favorite time. That was pitching to such an unreal standard that... Again, it, it, it almost felt fake, but it was not fake. It was very, very real. And then in terms of the bat, because I wanted to talk about that too, he could hit. It was pretty cool. He could hit. In his time with the Cubs, um, total, he batted 175, 204 on base with five home runs. For a pitcher, honestly, that, that ain't bad. That's pretty good. In fact... In Baltimore, obviously of a DH in Baltimore, he only had like a handful of at-bats. He had one hit and one RBI. But five home runs in the regular season. And then in the postseason, who could forget his home run off Madison Bumgarner? That was like stuff of legends. And the only reason that that doesn't get as, as much recollection... As, like, say, uh, some other home runs, is because the Cubs lost that game. But it was still a pretty awesome moment. The dugout going crazy, an absolute no doubter. That was just awesome. And those were his three career RBIs in the postseason, too. And it was one of his two career hits and his one run scored in the postseason. I mean, he only had 13 postseason at-bats, um, so not like a huge sample size or anything, but it's something of note. I think that pretty much sums it up right there. I mean, there's so much more you could talk about with Jake Arietta, but us Cub fans owe him a lot. We owe him our thanks, our gratitude for years of dominance. 
even if it wasn't that many years, still, when it's a stretch like he had over three seasons, that's something that you can appreciate because of how much it contributed to the Cubs' success. It wasn't like one fluke year in a meaningless year. It's like, oh, he had a really good year. I was like, no. He had several dominant years, historically dominant years, in which he pitched no hitters, and he pitched in the postseason, and he helped the Cubs win a World Series. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss him. I think we're all going to miss him. Jake Arrieta, we wish you the best of luck in Philadelphia. We hope that you can regain what you once were in a Cubs uniform or something close to it because I want to see you succeed the rest of your career. I'm glad that you were able to to get paid and go to a place that you feel suited you. There's no, I, I think it's silly to have any hard feelings here. I mean, come on. So thanks again, Jake Arrieta. Good luck in Philadelphia.